Hello, Helena. I'm Jana May, and I'm your local real estate expert with Exit Magic City Realty. And I am so excited to let you know that we have Chris Van Cleve today on Business Unusual. Chris is an active member in Helena, but I'm just going to read his a, a portion of his bio, his bio, if I can stop stuttering. Chris Van Cleve is a proven leader that believes in getting things done. As a leader at one of the nation's top financial institutions, Mr. Van Cleve has led teams to achieve operational excellence while saving millions. As chairperson of Helena's Beautification Board, he resurrected the Flower Basket Program. And we love those. We do love those. He also created educational opportunities for citizens by creating spring planting and fall cleanup days, engaging citizens in local beautification efforts while teaching the basics of gardening. Chris worked alongside others on the board to solidify a natural horticultural, I hope I said that right, horticultural trial, did I say that right? to help identify sustainable rose cultivars. And I hope I said that right, cultivars. That will benefit consumers across the nation and hosts a thank you lunch each year for Public Works employees, just to thank them for their service and their partnership. As nationally known TV personality and speaker, Chris educates the public on growing our national flower, the rose. All this while rarely missing a city council meeting for the past seven years. And did I mention he is running for Helena City Council place two. So without further ado, I am delighted to introduce you to Chris Van Cleve. Chris, thank you so much for coming on Business Unusual. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Jana, so much for, for allowing me to be here today. This is a great opportunity. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Van Cleve. I'm a candidate for Place 2 on the Helena City Council. I have lived in Helena for about 15 years. We bought a house in the Chadwick subdivision back in 2005 and lived there for for many, many years. I just recently moved to Hillsboro. So still in Helena, love this town and looking forward to serving on the council. Awesome. Awesome. What do you do during the day? What's your day job? Well, for the last 27 years, I've worked uh, at Regions Bank, uh, manage wow. a team that, that kind of controls the deposits platform for the, for the bank and um, have done a lot of work in uh, performance management and you know how we can uh, change processes to make things faster and, and give more value to you know our customers so yes. that and uh, you know one of the things I love about the bank is that they really encourage a, a culture of mentorship and so we always bring people along beside us and help teach them as we go and um, I, you know, I, I love doing that. I love working with people. So this pandemic has really messed me up because I haven't been able to, you know, meet with folks and socialize and, you know, kind of bring people along beside me. Now we have to do it, you know, over Zoom. So yeah. it's kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, most folks who know me know that I'm a gardener. I love to dig in the dirt. And um, uh, had, up until about a month ago, I had a garden with about 185 or so rose bushes and um, also had uh, some vegetable beds. And uh, when my house sold, my house sold like just very quickly, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to leave this garden behind. So, uh, you know, I was accused for many years of uh, my neighbors would say, well, you've planted everything you can plant in your garden. Now you've gone down in Helena in Old Town, you started planting there. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, and I, I've got pictures when I first moved to Helena um, in Old Town, standing in front of those baskets and, you know, all the beautiful flowers everywhere. So, oh, yeah. You know what? Those baskets have really kind of become an iconic symbol of, of what we think about when people think about Helena. First yeah. thing people say is, oh, that's where all those beautiful baskets are. 
Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, the baskets are there and there's so much more down there. And people come here uh, to see that. They come to see the, the beauty of the town. And, uh, you know, I, I'm probably jumping ahead of myself, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say, well, you serve on the beautification board, it's just flowers. Well, when you think about what that really means, uh, you know, it, it means so much more than that it, in terms of economic development. When you're trying to attract businesses, people want to come, they want to work, and they want to have a business in a beautiful town. People who come here and, and are looking for homes, they drive through Old Town, they're like, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful place. Property values, uh, all yes, kinds of stuff. I mean, you're a, you're, you're a Helena's realtor, so you would know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you're selling your house flowers do help curb appeal that's right that's the first thing yeah. they see and oh yeah yeah i listed my house on peak bloom week of my garden and you know it was gone in two hours so i was like i did something right there <laughs> that's so awesome and i know that was sad to leave but um you got you've got more dirt to work with don't you that's right. I've more than doubled my garden space here, and, and I'm, I'm putting together a garden plan uh, as we speak, actually. And uh, I'll be digging in no time. That's right. That's right. So what are your dreams for the future? Oh, gosh. You know, I, I, I just turned 55, and so at my age, I'm kind of looking at, you know, what what's left for me to do. And uh, I love to travel. I uh, went to Eastern Europe last year for Christmas and uh, want to see the rest of the world and want to, um, you know, see what kind of an impact I can make right here at home. Uh, you know, I, th I think we've got to think globally a lot of times and act locally. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that I want to go and do and see, well, how can I go and do and see that uh, for the benefit of, of Helena? And like when I think of Eastern Europe, I think old world charm. Exactly. And you've got old town charm in Helena. Mm -hmm. So there, that could be a lot that you could bring over. Yeah, go global yeah. in Helena. Keep it local. Like That's it. right. That's right. You know, I went to tour all the, the Christmas markets that are there in, um, in Hungary and in Austria and went over to Slovakia for a day, visited all those Christmas markets. And, you know, uh, we, we, we uh, sponsor the annual uh, Christmas tree lighting here. And last year, partnered with the Helena Business Association uh, to do that, that awesome Christmas market they had. So brought back a ton of ideas that we can implement right here in Helena. So it was, it was a fun trip. Yeah. And thank you, Amy Guida and HBA for that. that oh, was, absolutely. That was incredible. And um, just, I'll say something about Chris. First Christmas tree lighting, um, I did a Facebook Live of it, and um, of course, me and lives. And Chris went out of his way to find out who I was, to thank me, you know, and out of a city of population 18,000, is that the population? I believe that's the population of Helena. Yeah, we're getting pretty close, yeah. Yeah, and he finds this Jana May who just shot you know, the yeah. <laughs> the Christmas tree lighting, the first one we had three years ago, first one uh -huh. we had at, in a while. Yeah, so. you know, and that Christmas tree lighting uh, was 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 a very very special event. And, you know, it, people think, well, you know, it just happens overnight. We we start we're planning for that now. Yeah, and. Um, when we got there that night and people walking around just talking after the tree was actually lit and families were gathering around that tree, I overheard someone say, you know what, this is just like something out of a Hallmark movie. It is. And that, that has stayed with me all these, these three years that uh, we have that type of quality of life here in Helena. And, you know, how do we work to preserve that uh, going forward? And um, that's, that's one of the main goals of my campaign, so is to help us preserve the quality of life we have here. I moved here in 2010, and the first two years, it was kind of humdrum, but I'll tell you what, in the, from eight years on to present, mm -hmm. it has been amazing. Well, you know, I, I think sometimes leadership change uh, kind of sparks, uh, if you will, a revival in a town. Yeah. And uh, where people feel free to innovate and uh, and to do things 
uh, that that are their hopes and dreams for the future, you know, things that they want for their family. So, you know, that's one thing that um, that I'm most proud of in this town. You come to, you go to Old Town and you go to the uh, Helena Market Days on Saturday mornings, yeah. and there are all these people who have corporate jobs during the week, and then they have these what I call side hustles. You know, they 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 make things, they do jams and jellies, they do woodworking, they raise fruits and vegetables, and they bring them down to the market. And uh, it's that entrepreneurial spirit that's alive and well in this town. I hope we never, ever lose that. Never. I think what everybody wants is to keep Helena as it is and fix the traffic. Just fix. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's a bigger ask than than you realize. People, you know, I think they I think they think we're withholding or the city is withholding some sort of magic you know, want, but to expand roads, you know, means expanding bridges. Uh, you know, people say, well, do you just have to widen 261 all the way through Old Town? Well, folks don't realize that would pretty much wipe Old Town off the map if we did that. So, you know, oh, what, yeah. yeah, if we have to widen, we replace that bridge and widen Old Town, well, all those buildings would have to be moved or, or demolished to do that. Nobody, I don't think anybody really wants to, wants to see that happen. So, We've got to look for innovative ways to preserve what we have down there and then, you know, kind of what I call redirect the traffic, you know, in other directions. And, you know, it, it's, it just seems like forever since they've been planning a bypass and road widening and all that, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's about getting a, a stronger voice at the table with the Department of Transportation, our county and, and state officials. Um, to try to get those roads widened once and for all, or at least get on a road map that will give us some dates and that sort of thing. Yeah, give you something to hope for. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I can hitch my wagon to a date. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> what I do at the bank, you know, we're, we're project driven. And, and, you know, at any given time, I'm, I'm managing portfolios of projects, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year. And it, it's like those are all date driven and time driven. And, and you know, I, I, that resonates with me. You know, by, by 2025, we're going to have a bypass. To me, that that would that would you know uh, allay a lot of fears and anxiety about traffic, yeah. but we don't have that, and and we got to, but we have to continue to push for it. Right, and I'll tell you what, Hillsborough Parkway has made a world of difference. I'm sure mm -hmm. Oklahoma is not happy about it, but right, yeah, just that alone has made a huge difference. If there's traffic, oh yeah, seventeen, I just loop around. So. Oh yeah, I've, I've I've done that since I've moved out here. I I use that parkway all the time, and yeah. uh, it's a lot faster. Yeah, it is. It just to get mm -hmm. Publix. It's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Go get a loaf of bread and a gallon of milk, and you can get down there <laughs> back pretty quick. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. So um, we've talked a little bit about the beautification board and the Christmas tree lighting. Do you want to talk about your other? Um, volunteer activities with Hel city of Helena? Well, you know, in addition to being chairman of the beautification board, like you said, uh, you know, Brian Puckin and I kind of partnered up uh, about three or four years ago. And then Brian said, you know, why aren't we doing a Christmas tree lighting here? So we brought that to the table of the board and everybody was in agreement. And so that, that kind of took off. And uh, then one, one year, I don't know how many years ago now, uh, I went up to, uh, to meet the Grand Marshal of the Christmas Parade uh, uh, up at City Hall the day of the Christmas Parade, and, and Joy was up there, you know, who she, she runs this Christmas Parade. She has, she's done it for 30 or 35 years, and walk in and talking to everybody, and, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm, uh, you know, I'm just standing there, and she's like, we need a golf cart driver today. And I said, okay. So I jumped on a golf cart and I ended up being the, uh, what I call the celebrity golf cart driver for the, for the Christmas parade. So I move all the dignitaries and officials from city hall over to the reviewing stand. Awesome. So, uh, so my, uh, my golf cart selfies at Christmas have been getting rave reviews on Facebook. So it's a that lot of fun. Awesome. <laughs> Something so simple. And it turned That's into right. an overnight success, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's really about, you know, I guess my life's been based on that. It's about 
uh, identifying needs in people's lives and then helping to meet those needs. And that day it was driving the golf cart. So and I've been doing it ever since. So <laughs> that's awesome. So you're uh, chairman of the beautification board, Christmas tree or is, is, the Christmas tree lighting part of the beautification board or is that so it is it is it's an official event of the beautification board so uh, that uh, you know I support the library I've spoke at the library on travel uh, recently um, love reading in the library you know I grew up I was a big book nerd growing up so you know I'm one of the few people that know most of the Dewey Decimal System so uh, <laughs> I remember that yeah, yeah. So this year I'm going to be a duck wrangler at Buck Creek Festival if, if that actually happens. And I'll tell you, I'm excited about getting in the water and, and wrangling some ducks. So in October? That be, yeah, yeah. And you know, the water will probably be cold by then. So yeah. it'll be, yeah. It'll be yeah. Fun. It will be, yeah. And you know, one of the other things that we've done that I got a lot of press at the time, and now that the trial is coming to an end, you don't hear too much about it, but you know, we partnered with Texas A&M uh, to do a horticultural trial here uh, in, in uh, Helena, the Earthkind Rose Trials. And you know, that's to help uh, really the nation identify what the best rose cultivars are. And being a big rose grower myself, you know, we, we jumped into that head first. And I, I've been very proud of uh, that and the fact that we, you know, are helping the nation prove that these roses can grow in, in what I call no care conditions. You know, you can't, can't water them, can't fertilize them, you can't prune them. You just have to put them in the ground and then observe them for three years. So uh, the end of that trial is coming in October. And so now we have to figure out what we're going to do with the roses. So. Oh, awesome. The reason yeah. why I did that expression is I'm an Arkansas Razorback. So <laughs> Texas A&M's our rival. But yeah. my husband for the vegetable garden, he's on the uh, agricultural, web, horticultural website, Texas mm -hmm. A&M. And I'm like, how could you? How could you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've been a really good uh, organization to partner with. They've got a very strong ag program out there, and um, I've been out to Dallas and Houston on several occasions wow. uh, visiting uh, some of their facilities, uh, and uh, in my role as uh, I'm on the board of the American Garden Rose Selections uh, here, uh, it's actually headquartered in Dallas, so get to go out there and meet all the rose folks and you know, try, just try to have a little bit of influence in, in the world of, of horticulture. And uh, it's been amazing. And you mentioned in the past that you're one of the top Rosarians in the world. Well, there was a, uh, a PR firm came uh, t to me probably seven or eight years ago and said, uh, we've done our market research. They were trying to hire me to speak at an event. And uh, they said, we've done our market research and you are the most visible rose grower or rose person in the United States and probably one of the top 10 uh, rose uh, experts in the world. Oh. And I'm like, who knew, you know, I just, I just get, and yeah, I just, just dig and grow. And, you know, I began writing about my garden and, and, you know, that became a blog and then a website and then speaking engagements and being on TV and doing all kinds of cool things. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm just a garden geek that loves to grow things and, and you know, watch the world bloom, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, that is rewarding to, oh. you know, plant a seed and watch, you know, the first green leaves and then just see it grow and become so magnificent. So thank oh. you. Absolutely. Thank you. For keeping Helena beautiful, you and all the volunteers that work with you. Um, so you, you're running for Helena City Council, place two. You want to talk a little bit about your platform? Sure, sure. You know, I think we've covered some of these topics already, but, you know, uh, quality of life is a big thing for me. You know, I, I moved to Helena because of the quality of life that existed here. And, you know, how do we maintain that small town feel with, you know, things like Helena Market Days and our Christmas tree lighting? And how, how do we structure events in, in the city to help preserve that while continuing to expand? And, you know, being a bedroom kind of landlocked community, that's, that's easier said than done sometimes. So, 
you know, we've really got to, from an economic development perspective, we've got to plan uh, very carefully about our future because, you know, if you drive down County Road 52, you see that expansion headed our way. And as long as it took for them to start widening that road, it's go they're going to continue to widen. And before you know it, and you know, it may not be this year, next year, even the year after that, but before you know it, that'll be approaching the Cahaba River Bridge. They'll be putting a new bridge there and we'll, they'll be expanding on into Helena. So, you know, we as, as city leaders have to begin to plan now. You know, my grandmother used to tell me, honey, it's always better to prepare and prevent than to repair and repent. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, I always just sort of took that, that you've got to plan uh, ahead. And you know if that's gonna if that's gonna be at our doorstep in five to ten years, what are we doing now to prepare for that? So I, I'd love to see the city rewrite its um, its plan for growth. And you know it, that's just a guide that the city uses. That's not something that's set in stone, but it's there to help us guide us in our path. And you know I think it needs to be updated and revised and and uh, just kind of reviewed on an annual basis to make sure that we're going in the right direction. That's right. And yeah, yeah. decisions you make today will can affect the future of, you know, 50 years from now. In my opinion, you know, had they looked at this from a much more uh, visionary approach 20 years ago, that we would probably, we might have a little different look and feel of, you know, our business districts and that kind of thing. But, you know, that is what it is. And we have to work with what we have today. And, um, you know, we, we just have to plan for the future and do the very best we can with what we've got to work with. And, um, you know, that, to me, that includes schools and, you know, taking a look at those and, you know, you drive past these schools and, and you know, we've got all these portable buildings mm -hmm. uh, that are there that our students are having to go to school in. And, uh, you know, how do, we, how do we have a stronger voice with the Board of Education to get on that map to, for expansion? Right. of schools and you know i think we built all these beautiful schools in the last you know 10 years or so but then we uh, they think well helena is okay but they don't <clears throat> sometimes i think they don't always go back and look at our population numbers and all that sort of stuff so you know who who among us will go and and, and sit in those meetings and say oh by the way our population has risen you know 20 percent uh we we need some help with schools so uh, it's just having a voice, having a seat at the table, and we need to continue that, I think. So, um, you know, one of the other things that kind of concerns me. To um, complete your census, let, let government, federal, state, county know what's happening in Helena and how many of us there are, but I'm sure there are other records anyway. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Answer your census. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please do your census. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, one of the other things that that, that really kind of uh, bothers me in a way is infrastructure and safety uh, for Helena. Uh, you know, as far as our what's our population versus the number of police officers we have, number of firefighters we have. Do we have sufficient fire stations? Uh, you know, police coverage. Uh, what are we what are we doing to address those issues and that's something that i'm definitely would bring to the table as a city council person is to uh, at budget time and, and really before that how, how many studies are we doing to ensure that we have officers that can uh, that can properly keep our our family safe and are we paying them a living wage uh, you know, in comparison to what the other municipalities around us are paying, you know, they'll come and work in Helena and then they get offered a job in a municipality nearby for much more money and they, they end up leaving us. And, and I, I want to see us build a very strong uh, police force and, and fire department that those people are going to come here. They're going to put roots down in this community and they're going to serve this community that they love. And they don't, they're not going to feel compelled because of money, uh, you know, to go somewhere else. Uh, we want to keep them here. We want to keep that expertise, that hometown expertise here. And keep Helena safe. Um, we're Absolutely. We're one of the safest communities. Right. We don't want to lose that, you know. I, I don't want to sacrifice growth or, you know, our safety for growth or for, uh, you know, undercutting, uh, you know, budgets just so that we can uh, – can meet some kind of a target. I think, you know, people ought to be paid what they're worth. 
if, if there's any way in the world we can pay people what they're worth, pay, pay folks what they're worth. Especially those who put their lives online for us. Absolutely, absolutely. And save lives. So thank you. August 25th is when you can vote for your, uh, see when I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> y'all come on august 25th and we'll, we're gonna all vote vote yeah. early and vote often that's right that's right. vote on <laughs> <Just vote. laughs> it's not alabama politician in me right? <laughs> so anyway so remember august 25th is when we can vote for our municipal uh, leaders that's right get out august 25th that morning and uh I'll be there keeping a, a, a social distance and a legal distance from the building, but I'd love to, if I haven't met you, I'd love to see you at an event or um, uh, that on, on election day. I'll be there at the polls. Awesome. Awesome. Chris, thank you so much for coming on Business Unusual. It was so good to have you. Well, thank you. My goodness. It, it feels like I'm talking to an old friend. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So Helena, be safe, be healthy, and be unusual. Bye, Helena.